All right, welcome back, everybody. So um, taking a look at uh, the land discussion here on the program this morning, and let's just remind you, so Parliament's ad hoc committee to initiate and introduce legislation amending Section 25 of the Constitution says, although there are still some disagreements on certain key issues regarding the amendments, deliberations that took place in July saw to the adoption of a revised draft bill by majority members in the committee. So the Economic Freedom Fighters, that's the EFF, has termed the draft a sellout bill. And that party does not believe that the bill will lead to the expropriation of land without compensation. Yesterday we spoke to the ANC's Matthews Poser on these developments. And now this morning we are going to have a chat to EFF's Deputy President, Floyd Shavambu, and uh, get their side of the story. Uh, thanks so much for joining us here on the program. Well, thank you very much for having us uh, and uh, greetings to all the viewers of SABC. So initially it appeared as if the EFF and the ANC were in agreement regarding land expropriation. Talk to us about what has since changed. Look, to give you a clearer context and background, you will know that uh, in 2018, on the 27th of February, the EFF introduced the motion in Parliament, which was saying we should begin the process of amending Section 25 of the Constitution. And after deliberations with the ANC in Parliament, we then adopted a Parliamentary National Assembly resolution which said that we should mandate the Constitutional Review Committee to do two things. One was to review and amend Section 25 of the Constitution to make it possible for the state to expropriate land in the public interest without compensation. And then it was mandated that Constitutional Review Committee to, in the process, conduct public hearings to get the views of ordinary South Africans, policymakers, civil society organizations, and academics about the necessity of and mechanisms of expropriating land without compensation. And the second part of that resolution, which is in the records of the parliamentary uh, uh, resolutions, said that we should propose the necessary constitutional amendments regarding the kind of future land tenure regime needed, considering the necessity of the state being a custodian of all South African land. That is the resolution that we took. And immediately after that uh, resolution, the Constitutional Review Committee, uh, working together with the NCOP representatives, visited several provinces. I think more than 45 districts of the existing 52 districts in South Africa were visited to conduct public hearings and, and, and listening to the people on the ground in terms of how we should handle the expropriation of land without compensation. We also received public submissions, written submissions, a lot of them, some sponsored, some genuine submissions that had said that we should amend Section 25 of the Constitution to permit for expropriation of land without compensation, but we should take into consideration that we should make the state to be custodian of uh, all South Africa's land. And then the Constitutional Review Committee report was adopted uh, just before the general elections in 2019, and then and then and then proposed that we should then establish now an ad hoc committee, which is an interim committee that is mandated with the textual amendments into the constitution, which still underwent the same process which the, Con the constitutional review committee had undergone before, of consultations of you know, listening to people in terms of. Uh, what had uh, to be included now in the amended the constitution. Uh, and in the process of doing that, a, 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 a section in the ruling party and in the right-wing political parties then began to substitute the component that we were mandated to achieve, which is making the state to be custodian of South Africa's land mm -hmm. in the manner that is. And then when we realized that the ANC doesn't have clarity in terms of uh, how the constitution should be amended. We then, as the economic freedom fighters, initiated bilaterals with the leadership of the ANC at the most senior level. We met with the officials of the ANC when the, 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 now the currently suspended Secretary General was still in office, the Treasurer General, the Deputy Secretary General, 
and, and all senior members of the ANC. And then they later on uh, instituted a committee which was led by uh, a former director general of minerals and energy, Sandy Lenotri, and uh, Bulela Nuka, and uh, 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 one of the senior legal representatives from the ANC head office, which also included members of the ANC uh, who are serving in the ad hoc committee. And in those deliberations, we all accepted that the peace by peace land redistribution regime, which has devi defined South Africa since 1994, has been less than satisfactory in terms of uh, uh, attaining land redistribution on, on the levels and to the extent at which was in. You remember that from 1994, the ruling party had said that it would have redistributed 30% of South Africa's land by, by, by 2004, within 10 years. Yeah. And then when 2004 arrived, the goalposts were shifted to 2014. And even still in 2014, there was never a, any significant change in terms of the land which was distributed from the white colonial settlers who currently own the land uh, to the majority of the black population who have been dispossessed of this land through colonial violence and barbarism. So that is basically what then got to happen. And in those deliberations, when we agreed that the peace by peace approach to land redistribution will not work, we then said, let us establish the custodianship of all of South Africa's land in the same way the minerals and petroleum resources in, in South Africa, in the same way all water in South Africa is under the custodianship of the state, which is distinct, by the way, from nationalization. And the Constitutional Court has clarified that when it was uh, giving judgment on, on the MPRDA, which established custodianship of mineral resources in South Africa. So, so Floyd, let me interrupt. And then, of course, you too. Yes. Let me, let me just ask you, I mean, just on, on that point, as you were saying, I mean, you yes. give up, a, a, you give a, a, the simple example of minerals and, and something as simple as water um, is where in terms you, you would like to see the land ownership and, and the custodianship falling under the state. Why are the ANC opposed to that? What were the reasons that they gave you that they said they did not want to go in that direction? There was no logical basis for the ANC to oppose the custodianship of the land. That is why if you check in the uh, now revised amendment of the Section 25 of the Constitution, they say that there has to be legislation that must establish custodianship. And our insistence, which is a correct insistence, is that we should establish custodianship in the Constitution itself to say that South Africa's land is a common heritage of all South Africans under the custodianship of a democratically elected government. That is what we say should be in the Constitution. But the ANC's approach is to say that we should not include it in the Constitution. It must then be said that the a legislation must be passed far much later to achieve that. And we think that is problematic because we have undergone a very intense and, and, and deep process of consultations. Our people have demanded that gain the land so that you can give us all access to all of this land in an equitable basis. Even the Freedom Charter, which the ANC claims mm. to mm. be a, a, a believing on or to be uh, deriving its policy perspectives on, says that all land shall be shared amongst those who work in. Yeah. So there is no way you are going to be able to equitably redistribute land if you have not made it to be under the custodianship of the state in the manner that it is. Because if you go piece by piece, it is problematic. The Department of Public Works made an illustration that there was an attempt using the old expropriation bill to take a piece of land for public purposes. Actually, the public purpose was to put ele electricity uh, lines pass over a farm. And the farm owner said that I don't want any electricity line passing over my farm. Uh, you rather take a longer route, which would be much more expensive. And the litigation process to that to just gain access to that particular piece of land for public purposes took more than seven years. 
Yeah, and yeah. this is what we have been. And these are some of the, the 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 things that that you encounter. So just to yeah. just to quote something that that the the ANC had, you know, in terms of their definition of land custodianship, and this was from an article in the Sunday Times this past weekend, which no doubt you have read. So um, Minister Ronald Glamola, this was what he had to say: is that you know talking about the differences between the EFF and the ANC, and perhaps you can you can respond to this. It says. This is where we are differing. They want us to take all land and put it under the custodianship of the state. We ask them, what is this? What does it mean? How are you going to do it, to take all this land and put it under the custodianship of the state? He goes on to say, they said it's repossessing of the land. That is what it means. But in reality, in actual practice, it is nationalization of the land when you look at it practically. It's, he goes to say that it would not only disorganize the form of land ownership, it would disorganize the social structure of our country and the whole economy for that matter. I think the Zimbabwe situation is a good example of what that would do to the economy. And that's a concern that's been raised by a lot of South uh, Africans. Look, like we, we, have, we have already dismissed that what uh, Lamula, whom we correctly say is Bruno Mtolo of our generation, is misrepresenting reality. He was part of the deliberations when we explained the distinction between nationalization and, 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 uh, and custodianship. And that is succinctly captured in a judgment where they were, well, there was an attempt by AgriSA to, to nullify the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act. The Constitutional Court clearly stated that nationalization means that the state takes full ownership and it can do whatever it wants to do with whatever it has taken full ownership. But custodianship is to hold on behalf of the people. It's not the same as nationalization. We've been able to simplify that, and everyone else had accepted that. And in the process of that negotiation and agreement with the ANC delegation, Lamula went out of the meeting to go and call his faction to mobilize against the consensus that was being reached there. So it is problematic to then even equate this to what transpired in Zimbabwe. There was never a custodianship of land in Zimbabwe. There was repossession of land from white farmers to individual owners, majority of whom were Politburo members of ZANU-PF. And we are not proposing that there must be taking of land from a Fandonder or a Fandonder Van der Merve to a Politburo or a Central Committee member or National Executive Committee member of the ruling party. We are saying that let us have custodianship of all South Africa's land so that we can equally redistribute it uh, to those who need it much more meaningful. We even gave an example of China to say that currently China is the, is the largest economy in the world, the fastest growing economy in the world. It is the, it is the, is the biggest attractor of foreign investments, both speculative and direct investments. But in the section 10 of current People's Republic of China's constitution, it says that all land in China is owned by the state in the urban areas and by, 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 by communes in the rural areas. And it, it, that is how it is. And but that, that regime has been working much more meaningfully in the China context in Mozambique, which is now beginning to be one of the biggest uh, destinations of investment. The land ownership is still in the custodianship of the state. And that is how it is. We gave a lot of examples in Singapore. We, we simplified it for them. We even wrote a much more substantial policy submissions, which we sent to committee members in the parliament, to the ANC, to say that this is the distinction. But, you know, when people want to misunderstand you and want to, to, to oppose you, yeah, they will invent their own uh, understanding of what you have said and then go and say, no, opposing you based on this one. They know very well that you never say that. All right. So, so, so Lamula had... is just sending out deliberately. It's not because of what we say and the context that we have provided much more clear. So, as I say, we had a, we had a conversation um, yesterday with Matthew Spoza, and he seems adamant that this is going to go through, even though, I mean, this, this 
rift between the EFF and the, and the ANC on this matter uh, looks like it's going to, to, to pose um, a risk to the, the, the final land expropriation without compensation draft, which is going to require a two-thirds majority. Um, are, are you not concerned that this is going to be the case, um, even though the ANC feel that they, they're still going to get this passed? Yeah, you know, the less said about Matthew Posa, the better, because majority of the things that he said in the interview yesterday were false. Like, he doesn't even know when the process commenced, the way we are now. He was saying that there were only two engagements with the ANC, which is false. He doesn't know what has been the process thus far. He got into the process far much later when there were disagreements in terms of what happened. And then he just rode on that wave of disagreement and then, and then, and then insisted that we should break these discussions. And, and our, our, our initiation of the bilaterals with the ANC was out of a recognition that it will be tragic for black people and black political parties in South Africa now when presented with an opportunity to reclaim our land, to fulfill a historical mission of, of fighting against land disposition that we just disagree on contextual issues, which if we were to be honest with each other and deliberate much more honestly. We're going to find each other. We always say to the ANC that there is no need to rush this. We are the ones in parliament who say that let us even postpone the tabling of the ad hoc committee report to parliament mm. so that we can find each other. But then there seem to be extra powers that control the ANC from outside because whenever a consensus is reached, in our deliberations, in our bilaterals. Some people go out of the meeting and call their faction and their handlers to tell them that, no, you cannot agree on anything, rather break those discussions and not reach a consensus in terms of amendment of the Constitution. And all these distortions of what the EFF has proposed are deliberate as a means to try to, to, to satisfy the handlers' interest in terms of how they don't want the constitution to be amended. Because remember that the, the, the Democratic Alliance, the, the Freedom Front Plus, all those who are benefiting from the status quo are saying there must not be constitutional amendment. And unfortunately, the EFF is not going to vote for a constitutional amendment that says that expropriation will happen subject to composition. And that is what the current bill of the ANC is proposing. Yeah, but yeah. also the ANC is refusing to amend subsection 7, which says that those who want to seek restitution of the land, uh, it must only be those whose land was taken post-19 June 1913. We said that you cannot set that date because historically, by the 19th of June 1913, black people only had access to 7% of South Africa's land. And to just leave it like on that 7% component is problematic. So that is one of the things that we have to expose at all times and, 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 and tell people to not claim easy victories even when we took time to, to, to eliminate them, to educate them that this is simple. We have done it before in South Africa. We have made minerals and petroleum resources to be under the custodianship of the state. We have made all water to be under the custodianship of the state. We can do the same in relation to the land question. So okay. that our people have got equal access because the piece by piece redistribution model and regime has dismally failed. That is why it is 27 years now since 1994 and less than 10% of South Africa's land has been redistributed to its rightful owners. All right. So, Floyd, wrap this up for us because uh, in, in a minute or so because you've said that you would like to, to see... Um, the, the delay for the, the ad hoc committee. You would like to see this being delayed right now. Um, it, it seems that you and the ANC are certainly not on the same page anymore, that, the, that your, your discussions have now, you know, at a stalemate. And to try and get the majority is not going to happen because also other opposition parties are not necessarily in agreement. What happens next? I mean, where does this leave the whole land issue? Look, I think the people of South Africa must appreciate that the ANC is not genuine, it's not honest. Like, we have got the upcoming elections, we have got the elections in 2024. So but the people of South Africa must know that the ANC is not at all committed to the redistribution of land. They want to retain 
the property relations and land ownership patterns that they inherited from apartheid. It looks like it is part of the agreement that they must just play with political power and not touch the land which has been taken from our people. And for centuries, our people have been killed and murdered. But our people have got other options to take the land for themselves. They have been doing so for many years. In many instances, we have been saying, only occupy the land which is unoccupied and everything else there. The people themselves must decide on the ground. What did they want to do? Because politicians have been given an opportunity to amend the constitution, to give them the land, and they are now not doing so. The people must take a decision on what do we do to defeat this poverty that is defining our people. They must then take a decision on how the land question must be resolved in South Africa. Okay. You do not need parliamentarians and parliament to decide on the future of the land question. I think that there has to be other mechanisms of reclaiming our land other than these deliberations which are being handled by external forces that control particularly the ANC politicians. All right, we leave it there. Floyd, thanks very much for coming on and talking to us. That's the EFF's Deputy President, Floyd Shavambo, uh, explaining the party's position on land with regards to the legislation that may see the amendments of Section 25 of the Constitution. And uh, that's where, of course, we wrap the programme.